Last week, Joe and the team did an incredible job renovating the kitchen in this open plan space. But now it's really obvious that this area needs some love. So now it's my turn to transform the lounge room and create flow from one end to the other. And the way that I'm going to do that is with some brand new flooring. TV unit might look like it's ready for the tip, but I've got a great idea to upcycle it coming up a bit later. Well, that was pretty quick. Now I'm going to head to Bunnings and choose the flooring. When it comes to selecting flooring, the choices are endless. To complement the light tones in the kitchen, I'm using a natural oak. This is a 12mm HDF laminate and it's perfect for the job because it's really cost effective and really durable. While I'm here, I'm also picking out a skirting board. Now, there are so many options. You could go with something quite plain, like this bullnose, which would match in with a lot of different styles. Or you could do something more decorative, like this colonial style, which will be perfect for the existing architecture in the house. I'm just removing the skirting boards here. Now, you could leave the skirting boards, but you always get a better finish if you run the floorboards all the way to the wall and then put the new skirt over the top. Thanks. Underlay is always essential if you're laying a new floor because it provides cushioning if you have an uneven surface, and this one even has a built-in moisture barrier. I'm using these 10mm packers all around the edge of the room, which will allow for movement in the boards. With this system, you simply line it up and then push down lightly. Couldn't be simpler. You can see I'm using random lengths here, and the reason for that is so that we get a much nicer effect, almost like real timber, rather than having a standard brick pattern. The pattern is something once the whole floor is laid, you'll really notice. It takes a lot of skill to get a skirting board right the first time, so Sean's going to give me a hand. Generally what we do is we back cut the timber yep. with either miter saw or miter box, and then we just trace out all the timber the whole way around there with a coping saw. All right, I'm game to give it a go. So basically we're just tracing along the profile, the edge of the timber, yeah? Yeah, just cutting it all out. It's really good because it doesn't matter if the corner's not square. It should just slot in nice and neat like that. Just like that, okay. For this area, we thought it would be really lovely to add a window box in. There's this gorgeous courtyard here. And with the shapes of these pieces of timber, we're actually mimicking what's happening in the kitchen. The other beautiful thing about this is that it's going to be like an architectural feature in the room rather than just a standard freestanding piece of furniture. We're just using pieces of off-the-shelf bench top from Bunnings and we're joining them together with a simple butt join. Is that right, Greg? Great. <laughs> Because of the depth of the seat, we need something for support. So I'm just using these smaller pieces of timber and they'll be set back a little bit as legs. Look at that, looks amazing. Just like I bought one. <laughs> it's a little bit more special than that. This new floor really has created the seamless look in here that I was after and it's made it a really inviting space to be in. Next